Welcome to another edition of RCE. Again, this is Brock Palin. You can find us online with all of our old shows at www.rce-cast.com. I also, again, have Jeff Squires from Cisco Systems and one of the authors of OpenMPI. Jeff, thanks again. Sure, Brock. Always good to be here. Uh, like I say, almost every episode, this is uh, I get to learn fun new stuff. And today we're actually talking to uh, a partner of Cisco, so this is uh, good stuff here. And also got to feel uh, obligated by my corporate overlords to mention my blog out there on blogs.cisco.com, and I think it's linked to from rcecast.com as well. Yes, and so our guests today are going to be talking about Xenos, um, a monitoring system. But we have two guests. We have. Uh, Simon Yakish, who is a principal engineer on the project, and then we also have Randall Reinheimer, who is at Los Alamos, who has adapted Xenos for use in the HPC environment. So guys, welcome to the show, and take a moment to introduce yourselves. Uh, hi, this is Randall Reinheimer. I'm the deputy group leader of the HPC support group here at Los Alamos. Uh, we have about um, 60 people and two and a half petaflops or something like that of HPC on our floors. And a couple of years ago, we took Xenos as a, a, a great starting point for a monitoring solution that that uh, we needed and adapted the standard software to do HPC. So that's where I fit in. Yeah, and hello everybody. Um, this is Simon. Um, I work for Xenos, uh, and um, I've been with the company since the very beginning. And uh, I'm basically um, uh, responsible for assisting you know large customers, tricky installations, uh, features, uh, basically everything that needs is somebody um, to uh, get stuff done. Um, uh, other way of thinking of me as a as a you know Swiss Army knife, basically. Okay, well, why don't one of you explain exactly what Xenos is? I think it's kind of came out a little bit, but uh, what's kind of its overview and what's it aimed to do? Yeah, so um, I'll I'll take that question. Uh, so um, Xenos is basically uh, you know, we we call ourselves a, a cloud monitoring solution. It's a, a distributed monitoring solution that allows you to uh, dramatically scale uh, and monitor all aspects of your infrastructure or data center uh, or cloud, whichever term you prefer. So what's a little bit of the background of Xenos? Uh, I've seen it pop up a number of places. It seems like you guys have been growing. Where did it come from? Um, it was originally um, uh, developed uh, in you know some of the first kind of service software as a service type of uh, environments that were probably around back in 2003. Uh, it was um, started by a, uh, a gentleman called uh, Eric Dahl. He basically uh, was uh, kind of you know using a traditional set a traditional set of software tools to monitor and manage their infrastructure back then, and uh, he just kind of grew sick of the big, wieldy uh, systems that they had and very expensive systems. So he just started uh, to to set out and basically write Xenos. Um, uh, nowadays, we, you know, we then uh, turned into an open source project that uh, basically now has spread around the globe where, you know, we have installations in all seven continents. Uh, we're somewhere in like 120 different countries. Uh, and have you know installations uh, right around the uh, twelve to fifteen thousand uh, mark uh, that literally call home every day, basically. So um, yeah. So what kind of things does uh, Xenos monitor? So you know, hardware, software, infrastructure. What what can you watch? Um, basically, Xenos really is uh, the idea of Xenos is uh, to to provide you a unified management solution. Um, so it really, um, you know, has the ability to watch essentially everything that you can imagine. Uh, we watch everything from uh, the very hardware details of your blade and uh, universal power supplies to the transactions that your Apache and your uh, your web server are basically, you know, or your your queuing server or your mid middleware server are basically um, uh, um, performing. So, but really, the the entire stack. The idea is that we basically provide you a holistic view um, that allows you to look at everything um, anywhere inside your data center. 
Now, um, it is my understanding, too, that you're also a, a partner with Cisco. I haven't been involved personally in your work, but I see that you uh, can also directly monitor Cisco's line of servers, the whole UCS line. So could you tell us a little bit about, about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, about uh, one and a half years ago, um, you know, Cisco was kind of on the verge of really pushing and starting to push uh, Cisco UCS. Um, uh, we've already had support for VMware, and we kind of found UCS to be really doing essentially the exact same thing for hardware that VM, uh, VMware did for the OS, right? So really abstracting away the hardware. And since we've had support for VMware, the logical conclusion was really to then take the uh, next step and essentially um, <clears throat> add support for the perfect software, right? So the perfect VMware hardware combination, essentially. And so um, we basically added in, you know, because Cisco was... Um, basically smart enough to add a, a very good API from the very beginning. We basically tied into that API and we can now basically give you an entire view of your UCS stack, meaning, you know, we discover all your blades, all your chassis, all your service profiles, and then we can actually tell you which VMware host of which a hardware host is, or which operating system is running inside your host. So we can really give you a, a holistic view of, of um, you know, business to blade essentially right so from the very chassis up to what's running which application is actually depending on that depending on that chassis so what's the architecture of Zenos look like when if I get it and I set it up on a box where do I go from there and what do I see yeah, so setup is really easy um, we, we really try to um, cater to uh, you know we Obviously, there's a lot of open source tools available in the market in, in that space. Uh, what we've really found is that a lot of them are wieldy and difficult to deal with. Uh, what we try to do is make it make the entry as easy as possible. So really, um, you know, I always say, I want my grandma to be able to use the software. And really, uh, we make it very easy. You can download a VMware image. You can download an ISO image. You can download RPMs. Um, you can essentially fire up the VMware image in, on your desktop. It starts up the application and provides a web interface. Um, when the web interface is provided to you, you have the ability to add devices. It simply asks you for the type of device, be it a Linux server, be it a UCS uh, chassis or uh, manager, be it a VMware um, um, a virtual center instance, be it a network device, and then it asks you for credentials and the protocol to use to actually discover and, and monitor the device. Um, you know, you can get a system going within virtually minutes, essentially, and um, yeah, from that point, uh, you can then just grow. There's obviously methods of auto discovering your infrastructure, methods of automatically loading spreadsheets of your infrastructure into the system, and then once you get the system started, we really want everything to work automatically. So after you, you know, after you giving us the details of your devices and and kind of entering the the specifics of them, um, we basically automatically discover and what we call model your environment and create a, a kind of a, a, a view so we can actually see the interfaces and file systems and you know we can process the events coming from the various uh, logs and so on and so forth. So this is maybe where HPC and LANL comes in because our architecture as we use Xenos is different from Xenos as designed. We stumbled across Zenos really a couple of years ago looking at, you know, some of these unwieldy and expensive solutions that Simon referred to uh, in about 2007, trying to find a basis on which we could build an HPC monitoring system. And uh, the things that we liked about Zenos were the, the community model, the initial architecture itself, the model of the system that sits sort of in the middle of Xenos. But we also recognized that there were differences between a data center, say a, a web farm kind of place, and HPC. And so one of the architectural differences, one of the architectural modifications that we made is we made a hierarchical system. So where Xenos as design and as deployed is, you know, sort of a single flat thing. Xenos HPC, which is, Simon can talk about this, but it's our 
contribution to um, to Xenos Open Source is has actually a hier hierarchical structure where you uh, can pass information up and down a set of Xenos instances. Yeah, so actually, um, Randall points out a nice fact here is that while the system is easy to use initially and kind of covers what 80% of the population wants to do, um, we really are uh, focused at, you know, providing you, you know, if you want to have a framework, you have a complete framework to basically manipulate and change the behavior of the system at a, at a very fundamental level and, and basically Los Alamos. So, you know, Randall and his team have taken great advantage of that. So, Randall, I wonder if you could give us a, a few other details. A lot of the listeners here are going to be quite familiar with HPC types of setups. Did you change Zenos to say, you know, watch the resource manager and look at utilization and memory and, you know, HPC care kinds of things, look and make sure if the like that? Well, our, our major interest was not in trying to, necessarily trying to cover all of the individual elements in a in the HPC environment that's almost the easy part you know a no goes down who cares right but the interactions and uh, combined failures between elements across uh, nodes in a cluster through the interconnect out to external network um, tied together with uh, resource manager operation, all that kind of stuff as a whole picture was what we were after. Not so much individual failures, but what, it, what do things look like if you could look at them all together, which is where we started with Xenos. So it sort of went out and looked at everything, and, and the, the differences, again, were very tightly coupled. So... Uh, combined failures are a big deal, and we're also very hierarchical, so a hierarchical architecture suits HPC a little bit better. So when you're saying that you have a hierarchical thing, it's like if you have a core switch out, you're not going to get a notification for every single leaf switch and every single node going out that sits behind that. You just know that core switch is out and the system knows the topology. Uh, well, that that's true. Xenos actually takes care of that uh, more by itself. What I'm talking about is um, you have a set of Xenos instances at sort of the lower layer that you can really dive into the details of errors that happen on nodes on a particular cluster and the interconnect on a particular cluster. Then you can pass up some of that information and interject information about, say, the DRM server and the job running across that particular cluster. And then you can pass it up yet another level and sort of have an operation staff just looking at, you know, one big, you know, set of green, yellow, red, uh, you know, kind of traffic light boxes and be able to move up and down that inf that hierarchy because... Um, if you have a failure at, well, just different information is relevant at, at different levels. The interconnect information is a separate set of information from the networking that connects the clusters. And so you want to be able to not have to look at everything in one place, but just look at the relevant pieces together passed up and down. So at the site I work at, we use Torque as our resource manager, and we use Torque's health check script to set nodes offline when error counters on network interface gets above a certain amount, uh, a machine's been oomed and a process has been killed, certain things like that to kind of notify us of issues. Why go a completely separate infrastructure with Xenos rather than kind of using some built-in functionality in your resource manager? Well, because that only works for the resource manager. Um, we were looking for a, an overarching tool. We actually had a very interesting session. We had a birds of a feather session at uh, Supercomputing 10 down in New Orleans uh, that was um, much more well attended than, than, than uh, we expected. And one of the interesting discussions there was, well, you know, should 
the uh, configuration management define the system, or should the monitoring system enforce a um, enforce a configuration? Right now, we have those things separate. We use CF Engine for one. We use Xenos for the other. Uh, I think it's a, a really interesting question about whether you could bring that concept full circle to either have configuration management that does monitoring or monitoring that does configuration management sort of all together. I don't think right now there's there, there are things that attempt to do that, but um, not in a, a fully featured kind of way. Uh, and again, just to answer the original question, I, I think we everybody I've I've talked to and I've talked to a lot of people in HPC has a have they have a lot of good tools um, but they have a lot of good individual tools they have tools that work at their specific site almost everybody has a script like you're talking about that looks at node health and offline's nodes but there's no cohesiveness to that and uh, one of our hopes at least is that if we could form a community around HPC monitoring maybe we could get some best practices going in those kind of areas also I think one thing that you might want to consider here as well is that um, while Torque is great to actually run your jobs it's really not necessarily designed to also do your monitoring so there's concepts that probably completely pass you by with Torque that you know, come to light. So, for example, uh, Xenos is a great system to capture all your events, right? Be it syslogs, be it SNMP traps across your infrastructure, and then kind of overlay that with what the impact on your various subsystems are and that kind of thing. That's something very difficult to achieve with a resource manager or, or a job scheduler. So, this is a perfect tie in here. Can you give us the laundry list of, you know, inputs? that you can accept or, or systems that you can monitor um, uh, to include software systems. And, uh, you know, we already talked about Cisco UCS, but what other hardware platforms uh, do you support as well? I think you probably don't have the time at this podcast to actually cover all of the <laughs> devices and, and hardware and protocols that we, that we, that Xenos as a whole covers. Um, the system is very extensible. Uh, it, it, we have plugins that we call Zen packs that are extremely powerful. Um, you know, they can do anything from add uh, new processes that perform uh, a totally new type of collection uh, that bring in, you know, Cisco MDS events or the like, or accept MDS events from, from your security infrastructure um, to, you know, small scripts that essentially run a check against some sort of device and, and basically return a number. Uh, so we really have about, you know, 150 to 200 Zen packs really that are either, you know, internal to us or contributed through the community that we have. Um, just a high level view. We basically support um, SNMP, we support uh, SSH, we support arbitrary commands, we support, uh, you know, this reception of UCS events, we receive uh, VMware events. Uh, SNMP uh, traps, uh, syslogs, Windows event logs. We support Windows performance collection, uh, you know, RPC, SOAP, REST, all of those types of uh, uh, data sources are essentially are, are something that we can tie in with and, and do various and fetch information from. So these plugins that you mentioned, what, uh, what language does one have to write that in? Um, the plugins are most, it really depends on what level of integration you're looking for. Um, a very easy plugin that essentially is nothing but a command and a predefined, uh, what we call template, uh, is basically something that you, on one side, you can click, use the, our web UI to actually click and assemble that and then export the Zen pack. And then you could basically have a, you know, small command that you, is written in anything, right? Be it Java, be it Perl, be it, um, Python, be it. Bash that then basically performs something on the host against an input device or locally and brings in that data. So that's kind of a very simplistic plugin. More complicated plugins are generally written in Python. They basically integrate with our uh, application server uh, more, more closely and they basically bring in model data, meaning you actually go out, you query something, you discover uh, uh, the structure and the relationships be between things and then you bring it in. So, for example, for UCS where you go out, you discover 
the blades, you discover the chassis, you discover the service profiles, you have to actually write something we call a modeling plugin that goes out and brings in the modeling relational data into our database and into our web view, essentially. And those are written in Python. So how many hosts or devices or switches are, is uh, Xenos designed to support? Well, as a you know, as a cloud solution, um, that is a very uh, needs obviously to be a very flexible number. Uh, we have customers and, and community users that use Senos to monitor you know two servers in the basement, and then obviously we also are deployed in some of the largest um, you know cloud providers or service providers or data centers uh, in the world. So, for example, um, Rackspace is a custom of ours, and all of their global network operations uses Xenos to monitor all aspects of their network. Uh, that's uh, basically about 30,000 um, network devices. Uh, Accenture is another custom of ours where they basically monitor all internal um, IT infrastructure. Um, we have, um, obviously, you know, various projects going on at Cisco, um, so, the, you know, really, um, and then obviously Los Alamos also has a, a large number of nodes that in one way or another we tie in with them. So really the system is designed to essentially, it's a very risky thing to say, but essentially to scale infinitely because it has an ability to distribute, to be distributed, right? So the distributed uh, element or the distributed architecture allows us to essentially scale horizontally as you, as your infrastructure grows you keep adding more and more hosts to our system, allowing you to scale the system larger. So a lot of monitoring systems literally do just that. They just monitor and notify you by page or email. Um, can you actually have Xenos take an action? Can you actually have like almost like a flowchart built in, like do this if you see this, do this if you see this? Yep, uh, we actually have... Uh, so as you point out, um, we actually have an event management system built in. So things, you know, such as Netcool or, you know, HP OpenView, those types of things have been replaced very, very effectively by our customers. As such, we can not only watch, we also notify you. Anything inside the system almost triggers an event, and when we can act upon those events as well. So we could, uh, we could basically, as you, you know, we could try to restart your Windows service. We can, you know, uh, bounce a process or something along those lines. So we have something that actually can perform actions based on the events that are coming in, in, in inside the system. We actually take advantage of that uh, here at Los Alamos. We have, um, you know, several thousand nodes, probably in a few dozen network devices plus interconnects that we're monitoring our classified networks. And one of the things that we do is um, do some automated event, uh, no offlining nodes, onlining nodes, that sort of thing. And we've also sort of taken a little bit of the um, possibility of error out of commonly used, uh, commonly repeated tasks by our operations staff. So they used to have a process in a notebook that, you know, do this, SSH to this node, follow these things. And now with Xenos, it's push this button um, and away you go. So it's all scripted. So we took a lot of the uh, uncertainty out of how those processes got executed away by using by using the software. So you mentioned earlier a couple times in the conversation so far that Xenos is is open source. Um, how does your community work? How many? Who's involved? And how does the contribution model work? And uh, who makes the decisions and things like that? Um, yes, so uh, Xenos basically, uh, you know, we have a series of users um, that uh, obviously, you know, roughly around, I think the community count stands at anywhere between 20,000 and 30,000, something like that, um, with 10,000 or 15,000 deployment, you know, the numbers might be off, but the, of deployments that call in daily, um, and obviously users are involved to, to varying degrees. Uh, we have a core set of users. Uh, would be difficult to put in, in, you know, in the dozens, basically, you know, uh, that that contribute really f uh, uh, um, 
effectively to the project. They they contribute Zen packs. Um, we have documentation out there on how to develop and, and basically contribute Zen packs to us. Um, we have a community manager that actually takes the input and uh, kind of grooms the Zen packs, makes sure that they're okay publishes uh, the screenshots and instructions and make sure that um, they are upgraded and kind of uh, as we go along. Um, the big decision on the infrastructure and the core of the project, so to say, are usually made by us. We take communities and uh, uh, we take community uh, in, input, obviously, on best practices and how the product is used. But the kind of the, 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 the pipes or the piping is, is generally um, – um, you know, handled by us essentially. The Xenos HPC, for instance, is is separate. I I don't expect that uh, it's going to take much into the core because what's right for HPC isn't necessarily right for the bulk of the customers, and yet we're able to leverage the core software. So we have sort of our own you know community area off to the side. The the vast majority of the software is the core software, and then you just have you know a set of Zen packs. And it's probably worth mentioning what um, what else we added. I, I mentioned the hierarchy. Uh, we also have a history of the model. So so there's a model of what you're monitoring in Xenos. At least the last I knew, that just changes as your as your infrastructure changes. For us, we need to go back maybe and see what did it look like last week when uh, everything went to pieces. So we have that history stored. We also have a roll-up of events so that if you have a whole bunch of nodes go down at once, but you can tie that back to one single event. We have a mechanism to you know tie all those children events to parent events. Uh, we do issue tracking that we report out on. We do asset tracking so you can follow a node around a cluster if it gets fixed and put back in somewhere else and exhibits the same problem you can see that in the monitoring system and I don't think any of those are in the core I think those are all in uh, HPC's impacts but Simon can correct me if uh, if I'm wrong about that yeah so um, you're actually correct here uh, basically um, we kind of allow you know that's why Xenos the community version is also called core it basically it allows you, us to abstract away all the functionality that we keep adding to the product and what community members might add to the product and then basically um, uh, you know people like Randall and so on and so forth can add Zen packs that can then be optionally installed by users. Um, so um, we really, uh, you know, we have a forum that's where the Zen packs are kept. Um, community members give feedback and rate on, uh, on Zen packs. Uh, you know, that's how kind of the work in the community interacts with each other as well. So, so what's coming for the future for Zenos? Uh, new features, new versions? Yeah, certainly. Um, we're always working on a, on a, um, on on bigger and, and better things. Um, really, the next level for us is to to take it up a notch, right? So we've so far managed systems and environments that have tens of thousands, but we really want to get to a, a level where we literally manage hundreds or millions of nodes, essentially. So we've done a lot or impressive work on refining uh, uh, some of the elements that we found to be of uh, problematic scale. Uh, so the event system has really been reworked in our next release. Um, it's called Avalon. Um, and so it will really bring to the table a system that, that can scale at cloud, right? So we have the ability to process you know, literally thousands of events per second. We have the ability to, to keep, um, you know, model information that is very rich and it literally includes, um, you know, billions of nodes and objects. So that's really the next level. And we want to provide a, a view that is very much um, uh, more intelligent of what we have at the moment. So at the moment, we're very good at presenting views, presenting um, data, so to say, but really, where we're lacking is um, we're lacking at taking the data and turning that data into information that is actionable. And that's really where um, we basically want to go next. So we want to provide a layer 
um, which we call impact, uh, basically that allows us to have a, an ability to turn the data that we have into um, basically information. It's probably already too much I said there anyway, uh, so I'm going to stop now. Otherwise, um, the, the higher-ups are probably going to get upset with me. <laughs> <laughs> so then let me ask you, what is the difference between what is developed in the, the community as the community product and what you guys uh, put out as your enterprise product? Yeah, so uh, basically what the enterprise customers get when they when they decide to you know, subscribe with us, um, you basically obviously – you know, one of the elements is obviously support. Um, we also go and actually take um, the uh, series of ZAN packs that we have that are very, you know, enterprise focused essentially, right? So VMware Virtual Center, Cisco UCS, um, those are technologies and things that you're generally not interested so much if you have a small environment, but only when you're, when you're an enterprise customer. And so those are kind of the value adds and packs that we put on top of the core product that really uh, make, this, make, make our product and, uh, valuable to a large enterprise. Also, um, we kind of bring the system up to scale so we have the ability to um, you know, we have various uh, tuning capabilities and so on and so forth and that we basically put in place as well. So really the system um, performs at enterprise scale with higher reliability and so on and so forth. So what's the contact information, the point of entry for somebody who wants to get involved with Xenos or Xenos HPC? So for, well, for Xenos, I can answer for Simon, there's uh, Xenos.com, but... Um, for the HPC in the community area of Xenos, there's a, a specific HPC area, which actually is going to get updated when the newest uh, version of Xenos comes out. We're going to do a fairly major revision at that point, uh, and I think we can refer to that link someplace on your page. Yep, yep, we'll make sure uh, any links you guys have for us, we'll make sure is in the show notes on our website. Obviously, I'll have a, a bunch of stuff for the show notes as well, but as uh, Randall said, uh, its easiest way is to hit www.xenos.com. Uh, there's a lot of video content. Uh, there's a link into the community pages. Um, you can download the product if you want, get started with the VMware uh, edition. We have a quick start guide that really is no more than five pages, and you basically have your first server in there as well. So very easy to get started and lots of information out there. Okay, guys. Well, thank you very much for your time. This show will be up soon, and we'll get those links from you and put it on the show notes. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.